Well hello there, my beautiful strutting disco chickens. How the diabolo are we all doing? Sir Doc has got lost in the distant land of Discord, so he sent an owl and asked me to react to Ren's latest drop. Yesterday Ren treated us to some photos of him and Justin Timberlake, looking at his sexy back in some mirrors, rocking his body whilst Justin was adjusting Ren's suit and tie. Wait, what was that? Oh apparently it wasn't Justin Timberlake, it was Justin Hawkins from the darkness. Well, I can't stop the feeling, I'm going to cry me a river. But don't worry, Justin Hawkins won't hold any grudges against me. I heard he believes in a thing called love. Any wibbles. This whole thing was in aid of the Sky Arts Awards, where Ren performed a rendition of his track Money Game Part 2. Shall we have a listen? <laughs> It's a strange time we're living in It's a very strange time we're living in I would absolutely fucking love it if that was Knox Hill under the sack He could get in the sack with me any day Oh Noxy boo, he is a sexy beast isn't he? I'm getting quite moist thinking about him Just, wow It's a strange time we're living in panic and hysteria Poor men learn that rich men don't care for you Narcissist mindset spread like malaria Sit back and watch the show America, Britain split through fickle shit Our government of hypocrites A counterfeit politician sit in parliament Not adequate Needlessly bleeding resources all dry Turn a blind eye if it means a pay rise Oh what a shame it would be Can I just say how relaxed Ren looks on stage? Okay, maybe not in that freeze frame But in general he really does Considering this show is going out on Sky Arts Now TV and Freeview to almost every UK household who chooses to watch it The first couple of bars I thought I could hear the nerves in his voice But that soon passed He is smashing this now that he's relaxed, I can too. Shall we take a brief interlude and raid the disco archives? This is Mr. and Mrs. Doc Play Coin in the Slot, a money game. Welcome to a brand new feature. And today we are going to play a money game called Coin in the Slot. Lady Doc and I will take it in turns to as each other money-related questions. A correct answer gets a coin in your slot. After three questions each. Whoever has taken the most coins in their slot wins. Are you ready, Lady Doc? You can just call me Mrs. Doc on game night, if you like. Yes, I've lubricated both of our slots so we're well oiled and ready to go. So if we both consent, let's do this. I'm in. Well, the first question is about the US dollar. Where did the term bucks originate from? Ooh. Is it from the phrase, young buck, meaning teenager or young adult male? Maybe because they had disposable income burning a hole in their pockets. Nope. The term, bucks, originated from deerskins. The word, bucks, as a slang term for dollars comes from early American fur trappers who used deerskins, or buckskins, as a medium of exchange. No coin in your slot this time I'm afraid. Well that would depend entirely on the age of the fur trappers in question now, wouldn't it? I think I should get a coin halfway in the slot for that. No, oh never mind, let's continue. Your first question is, what is the world's most valuable coin? Hmm, well as we all know, size matters. The bigger the better, right? Canada holds the record for producing the largest coin in the world. It's a gold coin with a face value of $1 million CAD and weighs over a ton. So I'm going with that. Sir Doc, I am always telling you that it's not the size of your coin that counts, it's how you spend it. The world's most valuable coin was not the largest at all. The 1933 Double Eagle Gold Coin is the most valuable coin. One was sold at auction for over $10 million in 2002. Your slot remains unfilled. Fine. Your second question. 
Which country once had a $100 trillion banknote? I know this one. I'm sure of it. It's Zimbabwe. Correct. Well done, Lady Doc. In 2009, Zimbabwe experienced hyperinflation to such an extent that it issued a $100 trillion Zimbabwean dollar banknote. Despite the high denomination, it had little purchasing power. Go on then, pop your coin in my slot. Gently does it. I haven't warmed myself up today so I'm a little tense. Oh, lovely. Okay your second question, Sir Doc. Which country issued a glow-in-the-dark coin? Hmm, that had to be America? Probably so that people could continue working all through the night to build the American dream, for the benefit of some cigar-smoking fat cat? Don't be so cynical, we love Americans, they form 54% of our fan base. And anyway, the answer is Canada. The 2017 issued coin is made of nickel, and it features a specialized luminescent technology. The coin's design features an image of two paddling canoeists under the northern lights, with the aurora borealis glowing in the background. Still no coin for me. My slot is feeling quite empty. Okay, for your final question, and sticking with the curious coin theme, what special type of coin is often issued as legal tender in Palau, a small island nation in the Pacific Ocean? Um, oh I don't know. Is it one made from wonton soup? No, Toblerone. Actually, potatoes. Final answer. Now you're just being silly. It is actually the Palau meteorite coin which typically contains a piece of a real meteorite. The design of these coins varies, but they often feature celestial themes or depictions of meteor showers. Despite their unique feature, these coins are usually issued as legal tender in Palau, although their actual face value is significantly lower than their collector's value. Interesting. Well, I am still beating you by one coin in the slot. And we're on your last question, so I reckon I'm quids in. Here's your last question. Traces of illegal substances are often found in banknotes, and the term, spending a penny, means using the loo. But what festival was in the news recently, linking these two concepts? Aha! I actually remember reading about this one. Environmentally damaging levels of drugs were found in the river running through the Glastonbury Festival site in the UK. Scientists warned there were dangerous levels of MDMA and cocaine in the White Lake River in Somerset. They suspected public urination had caused the increase and researchers feared it could derail the conservation efforts of rare European eels in the area. Sounds like a wet and slippery problem indeed. Well done, sir. A last minute coin in your slot means that the game is a draw. And that's appropriate because in the real world money game, the stock markets are defined as a zero sum game, both in the short and in the long term. A zero sum game is where one person's gain is another person's loss. Thus there is no wealth created and the overall benefit is zero. So in summary we may as well have just stayed in bed and just filled each other's slots. I would die if number 10 down is street born in fire. Only joking, only messing, don't be stressing I'm a peaceful adolescent, there's no need to be unpleasant Write my thesis in a rhyme scheme to analyse the brain My fingers on the trigger of a money game Rain, 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 rain A stormy comes our way Those who cries, who distorted lies Poison in the veins We like to point the blame, 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 blame It's easy all to blame we point the mirror at ourselves We're all part of this old money game We'll turn a Satan to a sinner with his finger in crime. I'll break it down for you, motherfuckers, line by line. I'll break it down for you, motherfuckers, line by line. Did you hear the barely concealed venom in Ren's delivery there? He virtually spit that line at the audience. 
Given that the funding of the arts is a hot topic, with independent artists and music festivals struggling to compete with the behemoths of the industry, this makes sense. But Ren had to carefully conceal the irony so as not to offend or upset the very people sponsoring him to appear there. This is a tightrope that Ren walks every day. Although fiercely independent he is supported by an organization called The Other Songs, owned by the Lloyd Webbers. Andrew Lloyd Webber has ties to the Sky Arts Awards, through his composition variations. Originally written for his brother, Julian Lloyd Webber, in 1977, the piece has been used as the theme music for the South Bank show since its launch the same year. In 2011, at the request of Melvin Bragg, Webber created a fresh version of the original theme for the South Bank Sky Arts Awards event, with Julian performing the updated rendition. This piece has long been associated with the awards and the program, reinforcing Webber's deep ties to this prestigious arts recognition platform. Andrew Lloyd Webber's connection to Sky Arts extends beyond the Sky Arts Awards. One notable collaboration is through his brother, Julian Lloyd Webber, who has worked with Sky Arts on several projects. This includes the show Classic FM's Rising Stars with Julian Lloyd Webber, which showcases new classical talent. Sky Arts has commissioned multiple episodes of the series, aiming to make classical music more accessible to broader audiences. The show has become a platform for young musicians to perform in front of intimate audiences, gaining exposure to a larger public via Sky Arts. Additionally, Sky Arts has broadcast events tied to the Lloyd Webber family, including live performances of classic FM live concerts, which feature music from iconic films, hosted at prestigious venues like the Royal Albert Hall. These broadcasts have helped bring more attention to the classical music scene, which the Lloyd Webber family strongly supports. And Ren has a strong connection with the other songs, the independent entertainment company founded by Alistair and Billy Webber, sons of Andrew Lloyd Webber. Ren has been working with the other songs for several years, and they played a key role in the production and release of his highly successful album Sick Boy. This album reached the number one spot on the UK charts, marking a significant achievement for both Ren and the Webber's company. The album's success was driven by a combination of direct-to-fan marketing strategies and the creative support offered by the other songs, which is known for nurturing songwriting talent. Ren's personal struggles and raw lyrical content resonated deeply with his audience, further boosted by the company's ability to connect artists with industry professionals and fans alike. This collaboration highlights the other songs' focus on artist empowerment and creative freedom. So the irony of Ren choosing this particular song to play to this particular audience of rich art patrons is not lost on me. It reminds me of when the Sex Pistols played their infamous 1977 performance on the River Thames during the Queen's Silver Jubilee celebration. This event is a prime example of a band's provocative, anti-establishment stance and ironic symbolism. On June 7, 1977, as the nation celebrated Queen Elizabeth II's 25th anniversary on the throne, the Sex Pistols staged a rebellious act. They performed the controversial single, God Save the Queen, on a boat named the Queen Elizabeth while sailing down the River Thames. The song itself was a direct criticism of the British monarchy, and performing it so close to the official celebrations was deeply ironic. The lyrics of, God save the Queen, attack the institution of royalty, branding the monarchy as fascist. The irony lay in the fact that while the establishment celebrated tradition and loyalty to the crown, the Sex Pistols were on the river symbolically declaring that there was, no future, for Britain under the monarchy. The performance was cut short when the boat was stopped by the police, and members of the band and crew were arrested. This event cemented the Sex Pistols' reputation as anti-establishment figures and solidified their place in punk rock history, blending performance with social commentary in a highly ironic, rebellious act. Any wibbles, back to our good King Ren.
This is business economics in the nursery rhyme. She sells seashells on the seashore, but the value of these shells will fall due to the laws of supply and demand. No one wants to buy shells because there's loads on the sand. Step one, you must create a sense of scarcity. Shells will sound much better if the people think they're rare, you see. Bear with me, take as many shells as you can find and hide them on an island, stockpile them high until they're rarer than the diamond. Step two, you gotta make the people think that they want them. Really fucking want them, really want them. Hit them like Bronson. Influencers, product placement, featured plan and entertainment if you haven't got a shell you're just a fucking waste man free it's monopoly invest inside some property start a corporation make a logo do it properly shells must sell that will be a new philosophy swallow all your morals they're a poor man's quality for expand 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 cliff forest make land fresh blood on hand five why just shells why limit yourself she sells seashells sell oil as well six guns sell stock sell diamonds sell rocks sell time to so time to a clock. Oh nice recovery, Ren. You pulled that one back just in time. The fish don't even know they are in water, see. Maybe that fumble was actually an intentional double by omission. Seven, press on the gas, take your foot off the brakes And run to be the President of the United States A big smile mate, big wave, that's great The truth is overrated, tell lies out the gate Nine, polarise the people, controversy is the game Don't matter if they hate you, they all say your name Step ten The world is yours Step out on the stage to a round of applause You're a liar, cheat, a devil, a whore and you sell seashells on the seashore. Rain, 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 rain. Storm, it comes our way. Those who rise, who distorted lies, poison in the veins. We like to point the blame. We like to point the blame. The point of me, who have wrapped ourselves. We're all part of this old morning game. This old money game. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, that was pretty fucking spectacular. I enjoyed it very much. Ren has done himself proud. And props to Romaine on the guitar, who also didn't bow to the pressure. If you want to laugh, why not check out Sir Doc's original reaction to Money Game Part 2. In it he challenged himself to include as many dad jokes as possible in one video, it was pretty epic. Goodbye for now, beautiful sparkles of life.